We're recording. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome to Two Black Girls, One Rose. Where two black ass girls invade the whitest <laughs> show on earth The, the Bachelor. Bachelor. I'm Natasha. And I'm Justine. And we just watched the latest episode. I don't even know what number we're up to. Yeah, we're halfway through. We're halfway That's through, all I know. Apparently. We're halfway yes. through. Yeah. And it was a lot. It was a lot. And we also had a bit of a warm up today, guys. A warm up? Yeah, we had. I mean, we were going through Bachelor news beforehand. Oh, yeah. Usually we get to each other's houses at around 7 58 p.m. And then sit down and watch The Bachelor. Pour yeah. a glass of wine and sit down and watch. Right. But this this uh, particular week, we had a little bit of a warm-up. Yeah, we had some stuff to go over. So, that leads us to some church announcements <laughs> that we have for you guys. Bring y'all to church, because before we get to the content, we got some business to address. And open up your program underneath your seat. <laughs> so, we finally got an email from one of you guys. Yay! <laughs> We're so excited. We got an email from Brianna. Brianna, we hope you're listening and we hope you did well on your finals. Yes. Um, but she emailed us because she is a 22-year-old girl living in Texas and um, working in education mm-hmm. and is a student for education. So she's at a predominantly white institution. And she emailed us about the whole Becca 22-year-old marriage perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, A really well thought out out email. Yes. Um, And she talked about how a lot of women in her program are getting married or already married to men at 22 years old. They're all the same age. That's wild. Yeah. She just, (laughs) she really broke down how she thought it was crazy and she's also 22. So we're not the only ones. Right. I appreciate her email because we said, like, Justine and I are both 28. We live in New York. Mm -hmm. We live in a region where, like, nobody really gets married this young. Yeah. So we don't really understand the Becca thing. So it was good to hear Brianna's perspective, being someone from the South who's young, who sees all these people getting married and still thinks it's crazy. (laughs) Right. Right. And how she's still getting to know herself, still getting comfortable in her skin. Um, As you do when you're 22 and as you have the right to, Mm -hmm. um, to do solo to Mm -hmm. do alone Mm -hmm. um and she also said something really cool where she said broke down how these girls are getting married to men who they've been with through high school and through college and how that's kind of their reason to get married right that is not a reason to get married no i'm gonna say it right now i'm not gonna say from my perspective and you know because i'm live in new york city no (laughs) that's not a reason to get married oh (laughs) It's not a reason to stay in a friendship. It's not a reason to stay at a job. It's not a reason to stay anywhere. Longevity is all it is, just time. If it's something that is holding you back from growing, let it go. Mm -hmm. Let it go. That's so true. Do not stay in anything for longevity. Mm -hmm. It's quality over quantity, people. You can have a friend for a million years and they can still be a fucking awful person. Oh my god, they can be toxic. (laughs) Yes, just because you're married for forever doesn't mean you need to keep them in your life. Mm -mm. So same thing for marriage. Just because you're with somebody through high school, through college, now you're 22 and it's been eight years and you want to get married. Like, no. Yeah, no. No. So we appreciate Brianna's email. Yeah, thanks, Brianna. Thank you. Um, Moving along. Moving on. Mm -hmm. Second announcement. Um, a young lady by, I think the name is Caitlin Bristow. <laughs> yes, just I don't care. Caitlin, she, no! <laughs> Caitlin, for the Bachelor Nation stands out there, oh. Caitlin was a prior bachelorette. She was the season with Nick Vial Part 2 when he came back oh, against the fine love. And it came down to Sean, who she ended up choosing, mm-hmm. who everyone says looks like Ryan Gosling. He looks like a bootleg Ryan Gosling. Okay. He really does. Okay. And Nick, and obviously Nick didn't win. So, <laughs> Caitlin has a podcast though. Yes. And so, where she feels the need to, uh, you know, do recaps and do all that stuff, which is fun. Mm-hmm. But this past week, she was talking about uh, the conversation that CN had with Ari mm-hmm. and how she couldn't see CN's perspective because she sees CN as someone who is readily available and you know so smart and beautiful and how how could she not see herself in you know a fairy tale relationship 
Just collective sigh. I know you all <laughs> sighed in your car, on the train, on the bus. I know everybody, we all sighed just now. Because we all know that she is specifically leaving out race in this conversation. Right. Cien said she, as a black woman, does not see women like her getting their fairy tale ending on TV. Which is a valid statement. And Caitlyn, someone who's all up in the Bachelor franchise, Mm -hmm. it's no secret to you that this is a very, very white show. No. Plain and simple. Even the fact that Rachel was the first Bachelorette and how historic that was. That just shows you the context of the show of how white the show is. This is not us saying anything. Like, it just is what it is. So her coming with her perspective, like, I just don't... When CN... I think what she said was, when CN said that... um, you know, she doesn't see girls like her getting their fairy tale. She's like, I just don't understand what she means by that. Like, she's so smart. She's so beautiful. What does she mean she doesn't see people like her? Oh, my God. That's the problem. She does see people like her. She doesn't see people who look like her. Yes. Caitlin. Thank you. That's the key point. That's the, the look point. like her. And that's what she said. She said, I don't see people who look like me. Mm-hmm. Not people who are like me. Mm-hmm. People who went to Yale and went abroad and speak several languages. Yeah, they're probably married right now. Mm-hmm. You know what? Let me not go off of a real tangent. This is a, just a brief church announcement, oh you guys. God. But we wanted to bring that up just to prove a point of why or makes us feel very assured in us doing this podcast Mm -hmm. and that clearly the perspective and voice of people of color in this bachelor nation world is not there right it's not heard it's not even there no and and i hate it when people say you know that we're voiceless because we're not we're heardless yes we're not voiceless right because CN used her voice, mm-hmm. and Caitlyn ain't hear her. She was not, <laughs> not listening. She was not listening. She just collectively just moved over that whole part of her saying that as a black woman, I don't see myself. And she heard what she wanted to hear. Right. Which is why we're here today. And that's why we're loud. Talking loud in the mic. Exactly. <laughs> Good lord. So thanks everybody for listening. We passed 2,500 downloads. Yay! Yay! So, so exciting. So cool. Thank you guys so much. Yes. So anyways, we just have to say those little church announcements yeah. right quick. Mm-hmm. Before we get into, you know, what y'all know and love. The good stuff. The good stuff. Um, so going into that. Oh, yeah. Y'all know what's happening. Ooh. Time for the Peter and Eric update. <laughs> I hate us. <laughs> Take it away, Justine. So Eric is out here. <laughs> Per usual. Doing nothing. <laughs> no, he's not doing nothing. He's doing his job, fitness, you yes. know, stuff, mm-hmm. um, which is always great. He also always makes his clients say, like, a motivational statement while they're doing, like, a plank, oh which God. would make me fire him immediately. Yes! <laughs> In this 40-second plank, I can't breathe, and I need to say that, you know, oh look God. out at the sun because the sun <laughs> day is going to shine or some foolishness. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> God, he has an iPhone X in your face. Like, what's your motivation today? Oh, my God. But um, he recently posted that he's in New York City. So, yeah. guess who's going to be stalking? Guess who's going to be riding all the train lines? Oh, my God. Ready. Just <laughs> in the cut everywhere. Just, you know, watching. Um, so, yeah, that's what's up with Eric this week. All right. Peter. Mm. So... With Peter, I mean, what's happening with Peter right now? He's like promoting Hive, the app. He's on a press tour. He's he was on Entertainment Tonight. Um, so he's been talking a lot about not only the app, but like reflecting on his time. And you know, they're asking questions, his opinion of Ari, yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. So that's what's happening with him. But we wanted to address something that I think someone sent to us. Yeah, someone linked to us. Yeah. Um, so back in December, late December, Peter did an interview. Not sorry, Peter's ex, Peter's ex girlfriend Brittany. So his recent girlfriend before Rachel, um, did an interview with Reality Steve mm. on his podcast. Um, I don't read or follow Reality Steve. Neither do I because he's all about spoilers, and I'm like afraid to read something I don't want to read. Basically, right. so I just avoid him. Um, but someone brought to our attention an interview that his ex-girlfriend did with Reality Steve, and it was a little juicy. Yeah. No, it was really juicy. (coughs) And y'all know I love my husband, Peter. 
but it did have me giving him a harsh side eye. <laughs> And I will continue to give a side eye mm-hmm. from this here forward, but it is what it is. Um, basically, in the interview, she is calling Peter's motives for going on The Bachelor at, like calling it into question. Um, basically, saying that he went on the show to boost his career with the intention of, I guess, making more money or more whatever to come back and then strengthen his relationship with her. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, he wanted a lot of capital through The Bachelor for himself. Through The Bachelor, yes. So she kind of details how they were casually dating, like, prior to him going on the show. He was heavily pursuing her, as she said. Mm -hmm. Um, And he told her that he applied for the show, applied for The Bachelorette, and was kind of moving through the process. Um, so while he was going through the process of the show, he was simultaneously kind of like casually dating her. It, it was a little murky. Yeah, that part had me really questioning her. Because yeah. why are you just like really involved with a guy who's who's going on a reality another show? show? That was all bizarre. Very like, weird. what were y'all doing together? <laughs> right. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so he basically was telling her that he was already in the process for the show. He was going to use the show to pursue his career or use the show as an opportunity, essentially, to mm-hmm. see what he can, how it can help him in some way. Um, the things that aren't in uh, Peter's favor is Homegirl came with some receipts. Yeah, <laughs> she did get some damn. texts. She has some text messages um, from Peter, basically. Basically saying just that, how he is going to use his, you know, looks and charm and what have you to um, get through the show. And, you know, I think he said something like the opportunity was presented to him, so he's going to take a chance on it. Mm -hmm. Which, fair enough, I think a lot of people go on this show for the opportunity. Uh, Yeah, right. the experience. Of course, the bonus is hopefully falling in love. Mm -hmm. But everyone's trying to promote something. Everybody's going for something. Mm -hmm. So... If I got offered the chance to be on The Bachelor tomorrow, I would go. Oh, yeah. Why the hell not? <laughs> influencer dollars are real. Yeah. I got stuff yeah. I need to sell and promote, and we all got, you know, our own little passion projects and shit. So, mm-hmm. like, I get that part. He just got caught because she had the receipts. Yeah. Basically. Yep. Of him mm-hmm. saying all this shit. Um, so, that's one thing. So, mm, with that. Um, but then Homegirl, while we're definitely looking at Homegirl, Brittany, whatever his name yeah, is. Yeah, Sideways. Sideways, um, was because of her comments on Rachel. Whoa! So, <laughs> she <laughs> was very aggressive. I, I feel aggressively. <laughs> So basically, Reality Steve asked her, like, what were her thoughts on Rachel, or was she not, like, you know, intimidated, or, you know, seeing that he was going on the show with Rachel, was she not worried, blah, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. Her answer was that, you know, I wasn't intimidated, you know, I don't think he's ever dated a black girl, he's never really said he's attracted to her, so I didn't really see her as a threat. Now, Brittany, is that her name, Brittany? I think so. I don't want to address her name incorrectly. I don't even know. Who cares? Yeah. Brittany... What we are not going to do is completely downplay a judge's daughter, a lawyer, a college graduate, like somebody who's really out here doing it, like Mm -hmm. doing it all with a Z. Mm -hmm. And you moved to Madison, Wisconsin for something. I don't even know. And I don't mean to demean her, but she is demeaning Rachel based on her race. Period. Point. That's point. it. She said Rachel's not a threat. I was intimidated by her because I've never seen him date a black girl. And so I don't see him being attracted to her or something. She literally said, like, go listen to the podcast. Yeah. Like, she that's... literally said that. And it didn't sound edited out. Like, that's just what, what she, she said. said. So you're just going to completely nix Rachel as a threat or because of her race, not the fact that she is super accomplished Yeah. and about that bitch. Like, <laughs> really? Oh, my God. It was so blatant. Very blatant. It was blatant. so blatantly obvious mm-hmm. and ugly. And I totally 
see now why she went on, why she chose reality Steve specifically. Right. Because she's not going to get extorted like she would if she went to Us Weekly mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. said some shit like that. Right. But going to she's, Reality Steve, you know. Sure, she got some dollars from Us Weekly, at least. <laughs> reality Steve ain't paying her ass. Yeah, but then she would. Then people would have been like, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. If she would have been totally transparent and mm-hmm. said that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she can't do She would have been questioned. On the cover of Us. <laughs> right. You can't do that and say he's never dated a black girl before. They would have taken that and ran. Yeah. So, and then her... You know, job would have been questioned and stuff. Right. Another thing that pissed me off about her and just, and not even just her, but girls who think like her, Mm -hmm. which brought me back to last week's episode with Caroline Mm -hmm. and Crystal. When CN went on her one on one date, they both did little confessionals where they were saying, Yeah, I don't really see it between CN and Ari. I don't really see the connection. I think she's going to go home, blah, blah, blah. Crystal's like one less girl. Mm-hmm. And they didn't say race. Yeah. Neither of them said it. But I feel like that was like the coded undertone. Mm-hmm. It was implied. Yeah, it was implied. Yeah. I've never seen, I don't think Ari's into black girls. I can't really see it between them. Mm-hmm. So they just could write CN off. That's the coded language. I don't really see it. I don't really see it. Mm-hmm. You don't see him being with a girl who is successful, very educated. And gore. Gore. Just, just like, well-spoken, has yep. good conversation. Like, you don't see that. Who is equal to you. And that's the thing that is yes. really missing. They see. They do not see her as equal. equal. They see her as lesser. Right. Because her handicap is that she's black. She's black. And so we can't see them together. Mm-hmm. Y'all bitches ain't shit is right. what I'm trying to say. Exactly. Got me out here. Y'all guessed it, bitch. Y'all guessed it. Yelling on the podcast. I need some tea and honey after this episode. <laughs> My Lord have mercy. Lord. So yeah, we just wanted to address that. That was technically the Peter update, even though that was just like some Peter shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> some Peter juice, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, moving into, should we get into it? I think we should get into the episode now. I think that's enough. 15 minutes in. Yeah. Talking about mess. Yep. You guys come here for fun, so I think we should get into the Let's become a fun cop, guys, again. (laughs) All right. So let's get into this episode. Mm -hmm. Quick initial thoughts. What are your initial thoughts? My first thought is that someone needs to give Crystal her medication back. Oh, God. Because (laughs) She's she's clearly off her meds mm. I think this is crystal off the meds I don't think this is crystal on oh, the meds yeah. and um you know whatever that medication may be <laughs> you know yoga meditation yeah, or a little of. you know you know a little blue and little, blue and reds yeah <laughs> <laughs> little blue and reds or in the matrix <laughs> uh, but yeah and then Becca M is slowly becoming a favorite of mine yeah I really like her it's, I I I like Becca. Yeah. I've never had a problem with her. I yeah. just don't understand. Like, her age just bothers me. Like, I want her to be 21 and 22 and free and out here. Mm-hmm. Not with this boring-ass dude, Ari. <laughs> That's the issue with Becca. But Becca herself, yeah. love Becca. Yeah. And she half Mexican. She's on our right. team. <laughs> right. I'm the shit out of her. <laughs> oh, man. And we got to see a new side of Kendall. Seen a lot more Kendall. Yeah, and I really like Kendall. She just seems like a sweetie. And she also is... Which is rare. A girl's girl who's a tomboy. Yeah. Those are rare. That is. That's a rare combo. And she's really cool. And I really like her a lot. Yeah. A little digging it. My initial thoughts. Yeah. Tired of Crystal. I like Chelsea. We'll get into her. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And just for the Bachelor editors, like, where is Jacqueline? Where's Jenna? Oh God, yes. Where's Ashley? Where's <laughs> CN? Where's Mikkel? Where's Marie? Where are they? We're not seeing them at all. Yeah. We had a whole episode based on Crystal. Yeah. With a sprinkling of Becca, a sprinkling of Tia, sprinkling of Chelsea. But the whole thing was Crystal. And we got a little bit more of Kendall. Mm-hmm. But we hadn't seen Jacqueline, Jenna, Ashley, CN, Marie. Like, we haven't seen them at all. Mm-mm. Yeah. All right. So, let's jump into the recap. Oh, yeah, girl. So, we've left Tahoe. We're in Fort Lauderdale. Nice, bright, and sunny with mm-hmm. the beach. Ari is driving along on... Just driving. Okay. Yeah, in a nice car. Nice, nice little, little Porsche. Car. Yeah. Um, they're staying at the W, Fort Lauderdale. Yes. Is, all right. Uh-huh. ABC with the budget. Yeah. Came up, came up for uh, Fort Lauderdale. 
and the girls are excited. They're in their new digs. They're running around. Did you notice everyone was wearing a version of the same outfit? Everyone was wearing jean shorts and a crop top. Thank you. That's exactly what I wrote down. Like, like a like rayon. Coachella. Yes. <laughs> everyone out on the same goddamn outfit. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was weird. Very bizarre. Yeah. Like, where's the originality? Come on. So Ari comes in. Looking just... Oh, my God. Okay, I have comments. You guys, first of all, he had on an all-blue outfit. This is blue really... Blue from head to toe. Really getting old. He just got initiated into the goddamn cribs. <laughs> <laughs> really? There was no bright... It was blue from head, head to, to toe. toe. But wait, not the toe, because on his feet Ugh. were my... You know, I would say my top three least favorite shoes. What? First two are Crocs and New Balances. Second, <laughs> or third, it. are Toms. Toms. They were Toms. I hate, they were nude Toms. Nude Toms. <laughs> and the thing that I hate about Toms, really, and this goes back to 2011 when I was studying abroad and I wanted to buy some Toms. What? And my black friend said, black people can't wear Toms Thank because you. we look like slaves. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, you're right! Yes! Toms is... White people can rock their toms. Uh-huh. Well, us, that mm-hmm. look too good on our feet. Nope. Something look a little nostalgic. <laughs> like a get out extra. Toms <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, that, that ain't made for us. Ooh, so they're, they're a little triggering for me. So the fact that he had on a nude pair oh at god. that couldn't even be a nice bright color oh. in Florida. A blue. He missed the blue. <laughs> Could have worn blue from head... Literally from head to head toe. Head to toe. Yeah, boy, guys, Tom's, and he came to pick up Chelsea. Yay! For the one-on-one, Chelsea, our single mother, mm-hmm. who she, yeah, she has not had her one-on-one yet. So they go off on their dates. Chelsea is so excited. She said she's excited to show him Chelsea and not just the mom that he knows her to be. Because that's kind of like her big thing. Like she's mm-hmm. the mom, so she's like, I gotta show him this other side. And their date is going on a yacht for the day, Mm -hmm. which is fancy. This is my kind of date. I'm not a boat person. We Mm -hmm. both were saying we're not really boat people. I hate boats, you guys. Both get seasick. Yeah. Your seasickness. My seasickness is as if somebody has knocked me out with several drugs and I knock out sleep. Like, it's so bad that I cannot control it. What? Like, I literally fall asleep. I remember going to Martha's Vineyard and falling asleep on the bench on the top of the um, ship. You were just out cold. It was a 45-minute ride. Wow. And I was out. It's crazy. That's good. The uh, boat sickness. It is. It's a good yeah. Because I throw up. Ooh. I'm that person that's on the side, embarrassing themselves. <laughs> like, <laughs> just can't keep it together. Oh no. If I take the home, if I take the motion sickness pill, I'll be mm-hmm. fine. But if oh, okay. God forbid I don't take it, I'm just heaving over yeah. the side. So this would have been my kind of date, but I'd be like, oh, before I get on this, where's the drama me? <laughs> yeah. I gotta take that, or else I'm not gonna enjoy this. Um, so yeah, they bark on there and bark on there. Yeah, for the day. Chelsea says, you know, I'm on a dream boat, oh. but I'm also with my dream, dream boat. boat. Gross. Oh my god, you guys. Ari looked ugly as this seat. It's this episode. so <laughs> ugly, and we're in a sunny place. Like, why do you look so bad? I didn't get that. He looked extra pale all episode. Yeah, it was weird. Very bizarre, because he was looking nice and... He got my... He got a genuine yeah. Ari can get it moment last episode, mm-hmm. because he was looking tan, and his foundation was matching. <laughs> This episode, mm, he was looking pale as hell and yeah. ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Back at the house, Lauren B. Oh my God, who came out of the woodwork? The woodwork, <laughs> generic white girl number four, yep. as I call her. She's just mad she didn't get the one. She still hasn't had a one on one, so she's really pissed she didn't get a one on one. And she was mad that when Ari came in the room, he didn't even make eye contact with her. This is how you know these girls are going crazy. Yeah, they're starting to really go nuts, guys. <laughs> Particularly if you haven't been on a date yet. Yeah, you're right. literally just getting fleeting moments with him. Yeah. So if he's not looking at you when he walks in the room, mm-hmm. like you're interpreting all of that. <laughs> and there's no one to talk to. There's no one to talk to about it. Yeah. But each other, mm-hmm. and it's yeah, it sucks. Um. So they're kikiing and being pissed, and in walks Mikael. 
Yay! Mikkel's back. back! Looking beautiful. Yes, all her not, inches. Yes, all the inches intact. She was not wearing a crop top in the... No! Uh, she had a cute little dress. Cute little, like, halter dress. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's back. Um, and then Lauren B., Mikkel, and Marie proceed to go outside on a very convenient telescope. <laughs> I don't think that a telescope with a W usually. Like that, no! <laughs> the bachelor intern carried this in. Like, oh, no, the PA! Yeah, the PA walked in and was like, oh, here no. goes. Just go here, turn it this way. Yeah. Just look over there, and there's something over there. <laughs> so they're looking through the telescope, and they're obviously watching Chelsea on her dates with Ari. They're jet skiing. But I'd like to point out that my girl Mikkel got on that telescope and was like, mm, that yacht. Looking at that yacht, like, damn, I wish I was on that yacht, yeah. sunning myself in my diamond bikini that I have in my suitcase. <laughs> diamond bikini. And the rest of the girls were like, Mikhail, Mikhail, they're over there. She was like, huh? <laughs> she was staring at that yacht, like, what? damn, I wish I was on the yacht. Oh my god. That's so funny. That's what the focus is. Uh-huh. Having a good time on the yacht. Because it certainly was not a uh, see through Ari. <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> So, yeah. So, now it's time for Chelsea's, the night portion of their date, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They didn't really show that much of their day. Yeah, they just showed them jet skiing jet and skiing making out. And that was basically it. Mm-hmm. So, now for the night portion, they go for dinner, whatever, at this car museum, that was? Yeah. That, that would be cool for me. Car right. museum? Yeah. yeah. That would be really cool. I'm into cars secretly. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, and, you know, they're sitting and Ari's, you know, saying good things. I love the fact that she's very strong and independent. One thing that we noticed, um, their wine glasses, that was some good pours. <laughs> that was some solid pours on that like wine. Good six ounce. A good six ounce. Mm-hmm. Like, throwing them back. <laughs> and so Ari, this <laughs> is funny, so Ari asks her, you know, he wants to know more about her last relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, because she's a mother and, you know, what's the deal with the baby's father? When they cut to her and she takes a swig of her wine, the wine is almost done. (laughs) It went from like one clip of the wine glass, like full. And we're like, well, it's a good pour to the next clip. That shit was almost done. (laughs) Chelsea is throwing them shits back. (laughs) Oh God. Love it. So, so yeah. So now we get to know a whole bunch about Chelsea. This is a lot about her last relationship. So she starts off saying that she she felt like she was drowning in a life that seemed perfect. Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn, it's about to get real. Yeah. So basically, Chelsea's ex um, was an older, more successful man. Mm-hmm. Sounds like they started dating when she was 20. Yeah. So it sounds like they started out really young. And they were married for seven years. Or they were together, together for, s- for seven, seven years. And he was very successful, she yeah. said, and, like, took care of her. Right. And she was attracted to that because she was mm-hmm. young and dumb, and she wanted someone to take care of her, which, you know, yeah. ain't bad. I mean. Ain't bad. You know. <laughs> Not, I ain't mad at you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they're together. Things were, you know, rocky, obviously. And they got separated when their son, Sammy, was six months old. Oof. Which is... That is horrible. Because that just means their whole pregnancy was terrible. Right. They were fighting and breaking up, essentially, during yeah. her whole... When your pregnancy is supposed to be so beautiful and, like, a, it's supposed to be a, a most precious moment for, like, a mother, a new mother, yeah. for women in general. And, and like you're just supposed to be it. supported. You're not supposed to be... Fighting and you know, drawing up divorce papers. Right, because like, you're carrying this other nigga's baby. baby. Like... Uh, it's your it's so much on you you yeah. just want him to be supportive right somehow and it seems like this guy was supportive financially and probably couldn't handle yeah. the emotions the of pregnancy part. and stuff like that yeah so they got separated when uh the son was six months but to make matters even worse mm. homeboy left her for someone else mm. now they're married with a son oh <laughs> Just terrible. Horrible. And Chelsea was left with her things in trash bags, mm-hmm. as she puts it. 
This is just a nightmare. Horrible. And it happens to so many people. It happens to so many people. So many. And that means that not only were they fighting during their pregnancy, but he was out here texting on another phone uh, 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 in, the, mean, in the... What's the thing in the car? What, the glove compartment? The glove compartment of the car got the extra cell phone. Oh, ooh, God. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. If he already had another girl lined up... Who he married? Who he married. That means that they were building a foundation yep. while he was still with Chelsea. Yep. But just try it for love. <laughs> Horrible. God. Oh, my Lord. I've been going through that and now going on a show like this. That's exactly what makes you go on a show like this. <sighs> it's just... Blood. You out here with your three-year-old, like, damn. I'll but just after, try anything. Uh, yeah, I guess it comes out to <laughs> <laughs> place to be in because i would think after something like that i would want to be in a a situation where i felt so secure yeah yeah this whole show you're insecure the entire time Mm -hmm. you never know where you stand with this guy yeah so i mean good on her i guess for being brave enough to go on something like this or really yeah and she lucked out because she got the single mother fetish right she got the guy who's into this kind of stuff (laughs) yeah thing for Mm -hmm. her Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but talk about a backstory. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't expecting all that. Me either. I was not expecting all that. It was oh good to give that goodness. context to Chelsea, who kind of got a, she got a bad rap in the beginning. Yeah, She was stealing time and right. being mysterious and trifling, but <laughs> um, we got to see, I guess, where she's coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, good thing is, she says she's in a happy place now. Yeah, right. And she's actually had less in her life, mm-hmm. I guess, in terms of things. Um, less than she's ever had, but she's happier than right. she's ever. Because she yeah. has this three-year-old boy who's just loving shit out of her. I'm sure smitten. Yeah. Very smitten. Um, so the date rose comes. She obviously gets the date, date rose, um, which means a lot because Ari said, you know, because she's a mother, he doesn't want to waste anybody's time. Mm-hmm. So if he wasn't feeling it, he would have sent her home then there. Right. And especially after hearing her crazy-ass story. Yeah. <laughs> like, he'd be like, look, I can't. <laughs> I ain't gonna set you up like this other dude, yeah. so you can go now. But he gave her the rose. That means he really must see something. You know what is so funny is that I see this similarity between Chelsea and Becca. Their expectations for him are so low. They are yes. wildly yeah. low. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. And he's like, yes. Here it is. Low expectations. Here I am. I can feed these low expectations. I can do it with these mature women. Because I don't need to do any more maturing. Mm-mm. I wear grandpa sweaters and wake up at 5 a.m. <laughs> Let's do it. That's so true. And it's interesting that he has this contrast of women. Because Chelsea and Becca are so totally different. Polar opposites. So. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a very good point. He's doing the bare minimum and these girls are like... Yeah. Yes, you are the one. Yeah, right. Very bizarre. Um, so yeah, so Chelsea gets the rose. Yay for Chelsea. You know, they get up and leave the table. Oh. They're walking. Mm. As they're walking, I'm like, God damn, we about to see some double doors. <laughs> <laughs> and here's some trife music playing behind it. There were no double doors, but they turned the corner. Oh. And there's Tennille Arts. Whoa! <laughs> Why is it always country music? I know. The fuck? Um, Last week when Lego was a country singer, right? Yeah. Tennille Arts, we got another country singer. Mm-hmm. Singing a song called Hold Me in a Moment Whoa. of Weakness. Or something like that. You got the song title? <laughs> I wrote it down because... So the song, I guess the, the bridge or whatever, was Hold Me in a Moment of Weakness. Oh, right. And Chelsea was like, this is so fitting. I've never, you know, I've never felt so safe in that moment with Ari. You see what I mean? These are low expectations, no, man. Very low. <laughs> you are not safe, Chelsea. No, you're not. There are 55 <laughs> other girls back at the house. <laughs> You are not safe. Oh, you are not. He's Lord. looking at you like the, you're the only girl in the world. You're not. Mm-mm. You ain't, girl. So stop with this. So yeah, that was Chelsea's date. Yep. Thoughts, feelings, concerns. Um, <laughs> I have concerns about Neil Arts. <laughs> She was really, really excited about her song releasing today. She did like a whole PR campaign around it. Oh my god! Because the song released today and her episode was today. 
Ugh. The Grammys were yesterday. You know, okay. she's kind of like riding a wave. Neil to Neil Sunday. Neil's riding a wave. <laughs> Sending out tweets. Yep. Strategic tweets. Strategic. Yeah, she's strategic planning. Show the marker around herself. this. Oh, God. Ay, ay, But I'm glad we got to see more of Chelsea because now I like her a little bit more. Yes. Yeah. I've always stood for Chelsea. Really? I have. Because mm. even when the girls were like, she's stealing time, whatever, whatever, mm. I'm like, she's doing what you bitches should be doing. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> I was saying that from like episode yeah. one, two, three. Mm-hmm. Don't be mad at Chelsea because she's stealing time and she's this and that and she's doing exactly what y'all need to be doing. Yeah. Being aggressive, going after what she wants. What's the problem with that? Yeah. So I feel like she was getting an unnecessary bad rap, but I secretly always stood for Chelsea. <laughs> so go ahead, girl. Yeah. Um, all right, back at the house. Um, another date card comes mm-hmm. and it's for a group date. And basically, whoever's not on the card is getting the one on one date. And they read off the card, and the one on one date is going to Tia. Tia, the little wiener. The little wiener. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> like, no excitement. Um, one thing you said was how she looks different in every frame. <laughs> She's different all the time. <laughs> Is it because her eyelashes aren't on and she just yeah. looks totally different? Because I noticed some places she'll ha- some scenes she'll have like full face of makeup. Yeah. Some places she'll have none. Some places she'll have on lashes. Some places she doesn't. Yeah. And it does change her entire face up. Like it really changes her whole oh, look. Entire look. Oof. So Tia's getting the one on one. So the rest of the girls go off on there group date Mm -hmm. and it's at a bowling alley and so before the girls even come I guess they're trying to film like little fun things Mm -hmm. with Ari so they have one moment where he like licks the bowling ball and this is where Ari gets my Becky of the week (laughs) (laughs) Ari's your Becky of the week Ari is my Becky of the week why? because not only did you lick a rented bowling ball, Ew. which is so beyond disgusting, <coughs> you Ew. also pulled up, I believe they were blue argyle socks that oh, he pulled up that. like over the pants. Oh, God. They were like these disgusting, horrible high water pants. Just the real image of mediocrity. <laughs> appreciate that out of someone who's having 12 girls come and like yes. do the run jump jump hug spin right and like be in love with him i'm just not i wasn't with it so yeah. are you get my becky of the week <laughs> over it. It. i'm oh. over it yuck he would have owned some goddamn they're probably his they probably didn't have to give it to him no he came right out of that suitcase packed that and got himself Ugh. Yikes. Um, so, yeah. So, all the girls show up. They're at the bowling alley. They're, you know, having bowling and fun. Yada, yada. Crystal, who mm. we're just going to be talking about so much on this episode. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. Crystal, you know, the girls, they're just desperately fighting for his attention. And I need Ari to step up and give me the validation and prove himself to me. Girl, you're going to be waiting literally forever. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the man for you. This is not the man for you. Oh and you can't God. be trying to get validation and foolishness on a group date. No. This mm-hmm. is not that moment. No. No. Maybe at the cocktail party. He, yeah. Is when he does the, val- you know, going around validating people. Mm-hmm. On the group date, like, no. Um, so they're, at first they're having fun with the bowling. And then Ari says they're going to do a little competition. Mm-hmm. Break the girls into two teams, and whoever wins the bowling or whatever gets to have extra time with him. Basically, at the, at the after, after party, the par- right? after party, getting drinks, <clears throat> um, which was good to see because they I was telling you see they used to do that on group dates. Every group date used to be like a competition, which I think is savage. The very I've never one. seen this before, you guys. I was like, yeah. whoa! <laughs> Every group date used to be a competition, and whoever won or whatever team won would mm-hmm. get that extra, you know, after party with the drinks yeah. and stuff. And the other girls would go back to the mansion. Oof. So they haven't done that at all this season. So the first time seeing it, I was like, okay, they're going going back to the old school <laughs> bachelor. <laughs> so you can see all the claws come out. Mm-hmm. So they break into teams. We got Becca K, uh, Crystal, Mikkel, 
Jacqueline and Jenna on one team mm-hmm. versus it was like the team of people of color. <laughs> it was, <laughs> yeah. Cien, Becca, who's half Mexican, mm-hmm. Ashley, Marik. So all the people of color left. <laughs> Plus Kendall and Lauren B. And the blue team won, which is Crystal's team. So mm-hmm. Crystal, Becca, Mikel, Jacqueline, Jenna are supposed to get their extra time with Ari at the you know, post-date cocktails and the other girls go home. Um, so uh, the other team obviously is really sad and disappointed. Yeah. So they're in some back closet. They're like in the locker room. <laughs> like in the locker room debriefing and talking about how sad they are. Um, and while they're back there, Ari comes in and, you know, sees them, blah, blah, blah. He says, okay, when would you guys come back out? And then he announces that he's wants more time with everyone. And so he made the decision that, you know, they're all going to stay. They're all going to go to the after party, whatever. Mm-hmm. The blue team noticeably was like, kind of pissed. <laughs> yeah. Which I would have been too. Yeah, definitely. Because this is a competition. Mm-hmm. I was about to have, uh, you know, more time with you with less girls there. Right. Yeah. That was why I was, you know, going crazy with the bowl and trying mm-hmm. to win. <laughs> and now it turns out everybody's coming. Like, I would have been pissed too. Yeah. Um, Crystal, though, was a little bit too pissed. Yeah, she took it a little too far. A little too far. The other girls were noticeably mad. She was she was leaving there being very upset. Yeah. So anyways, they all leave and they get back to the W and we hear about this infamous bus ride home. Why weren't there cameras on the bus what ride? The fuck, Bachelor, <laughs> ABC, editors, producers, where were the cameras on this bus? Mm. So the girls are recapping this crazy bus ride home where Crystal lost her goddamn mind (laughs) and was going on a rant about how pissed she was that Ari changed his mind, Mm -hmm. how he's a liar. She repeated that he was a liar multiple times and that she doesn't trust him and basically just kept questioning his whole entire character (laughs) because he decided to bring the girls on for bring all the girls to the Because he cocktails. just disagreed with her. Like, I don't know. <sighs> Ridiculous. So, all the girls are all dressed. They came back to the W, put mm-hmm. on their outfits. They're ready to go for their after party with Ari. Crystal comes out in a robe. <laughs> <laughs> she comes out in her W robe. <laughs> and the girls are like, are you not coming? Yeah. What? Like, What? And she just reiterates, I guess, more of what happened in the bus, where she just thinks that he dis- disrespected the blue team. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I want someone who will include me in his, all his decisions. And, you know what? I just feel disrespected. All of my stuff is packed. Ugh, I got so hopeful when she right? said all of her stuff. I was like, bitch, be out! Get out of here! I gotta put some clothes on and go! <laughs> Bye! <laughs> See you never, bitch, Bye! And so she's, you know, all my stuff is packed. And so Kendall was like, you know, can we just talk about the bus ride real quick? Yeah. Because you said a whole bunch of stuff that was not cool. Kendall was like, look, kindness is a big part, big thing to me. And you did not exhibit kindness. For someone who knows how to stuff dead animals... (laughs) Like, you, that's someone who stuffs dead, dead uh, animals, no matter how old they are, yeah. right? Because she, she carries a duckling. little duckling around with her. Mm-hmm. And she's telling you that you're being mean? Yes. Like, you're a monster. You are a monster. So whatever the hell she was saying on that on that car ride was just not even cool. Yeah. And so, yeah, they just all kind of looking at her like, uh... And finally somebody was like, all right, well, we out. Yeah, <laughs> see ya. See ya, bitch. <laughs> Oh, I see ya. <laughs> he was like, alright, well, bye bitch, we got places to be. See ya. And so they were out. They went for their post date after party with Ari and Crystal stayed back. Which her whole motive basically was like she just wants Ari to come attention. chase her. Yeah, she mm-hmm. this is all attention. She just wants him to come chase her. She wanted all of this. Him to get there, see that she wasn't there, and be like, oh my god, where's Crystal? Go, you know, see her. She's getting more one-on-one time with him. Like, all of this was set up stupid. (laughs) So yeah, so they go to meet Ari at the 
wherever the hell they were <laughs> for their cocktails. Mikkel is pissed because she's like, I've been out for a whole week. Yeah. And now we have this whole drama with Crystal. The fuck? And so Ari shows up. He notices Crystal isn't there. They explain to him the situation. And then he has to go and see her. Mm -hmm. Which is just, as we said, exactly what Crystal wanted. Mm -hmm. And the girls are pissed because it's taking away time from them. So he goes to confront Crystal. And they have this long ass hug. You notice that? I thought she was gonna really do something. I thought she was gonna undo that robe. Uh-uh. And there's gonna be something underneath that robe. Oh, I thought she was gonna have a plan. She had no plan. Yeah, no, she should have. Oh, uh, she should have. She should have. Oh, God. She had on the, the terra cloth. <laughs> what do you yeah, no, a terra cloth robe. robe. With nothing sexy underneath. No, no mascara. Nothing. <laughs> like, Come on. Nothing. No plan. So they sit down for a chat and she again, I just feel like <laughs> me and my team were disrespected. And <laughs> <laughs> and Ari was like, mm, well, no. What I said was I was looking forward to spending time with everyone. And so mm -hmm. that's why I made that decision. And then he looked at her. He was like, it's just bowling. <laughs> This is where Ari's starting to see that she's not a girl's girl. No, yeah. And it's probably frightening to him. Yep. This is where she's starting to show her crazy. Mm -hmm. When they say girls are like, she's crazy. Right, whatever, girls, are crazy. girls are crazy. Girls are crazy. Like, he's seeing that now. Yeah. Because the whole rest of the blue team who also got disrespected. Right, they're all there. They all there. Looking they, bomb, looking by the way. They all look so cute. Looking cute. If they were pissed, they didn't show it. Yeah. And they're there to spend time. Mm hmm so he's like, bitch, it was just bowling. What is the problem? <laughs> and Crystal's like, I just feel like I don't know anything about you. Like, I just want more time. And he's like, you know more about me than anyone Anybody. here. Because she met the whole goddamn family. Mm -hmm. She saw the childhood videos. Yeah, went to his house. Went to his house. Like, she got a very long, substantial one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. You know enough about him. You've got enough time. And so Ari comes back at her and is like, look. And this is my Ari can get it moment. Oh, nice. Good. Not based on his looks, because as I said, he looked busted no, this nope. whole episode. This is going to be personality based. <laughs> yes. He looked at her and was like, look, I know you're pissed, but like, here's the thing. All of this is like a distraction. Yeah. Like, right. Like, all of this, this right here, what we're doing is just foolishness. <laughs> like, <laughs> say with those words obviously yeah. but like what are you trying to get at all of this is just whack and then he was like you know what you stay here mm -hmm. I'm going back down and know that I'm not happy about this and my nigga said I'll see you in a few days <laughs> A few days. He said, I'll see you in a few days. And she can't go more than five minutes without looking that nigga in the <laughs> eyes. Oh, so that was like, oh, holy crushed her. shit. Crushed. So I appreciated Ari in that moment. Yeah. He really told her how he was not happy. He was, he knew, he was like, I'm wasting time doing this. Mm -hmm. Like all this back and forth. Like this is just a waste of time. You stay here. I'm going back down. I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. So he goes back down to the girls that deserve his time, mm -hmm. and he gets a little one-on-one -on -one with Kendall, which is good. Yeah, and Kendall looks nice. Kendall looked very nice. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I th I'm thinking those first two episodes where she looked nuts in her outfits were just flukes. I think that the other girls who like her because she seems very likable and like yeah. she's friends with people she would, gave yeah. her some outfits. What were that? Yeah. I don't trust it. I don't <laughs> trust that these are her own That's, looks. Yeah. I think that she was given these outfits and I appreciate that. That's true. That's probably the the more uh, accurate. <laughs> Lauren S. Lauren Q. Becca K. Becca. She got all them dresses. Becca K. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those dresses. I appreciate you guys for yeah, letting Kendall borrow. Helping out Kendall. Mm -hmm. Kendall's looking very great. And she has her little one-on-one -on -one where she says that she's never been in a relationship longer than about eight to ten months. Mm -hmm. She's never really been... She didn't say she's never been in love, but she's never been 
like hard in love, I guess. Yeah, I think she was scared to say that she's never been in love because she's talking to a man who's older. Yeah, but that's basically what she was getting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All that coded speak. <laughs> I've never been like hard in love. You've never been in love, just saying. yeah. Um, and so yeah, we just got a little context of you know what she's coming from. Next one on one time was our girl Becca. Becca M, right? Becca M, twenty two years old. Mm hmm. And per usual, her and Arya just <laughs> love like it, glued, glued together, <laughs> hugged up, yeah, like just attached because mm-hmm. he is infatuated with this girl. <laughs> oh my god! And he's just continuing to say, like, I'm just so worried. I'm gonna fall for you. Um, and then what do you say? Something like, sometimes it just works out, though. Yeah, she. What she does is she has to drag things out of him, and she's okay with doing it. Mm -hmm. I think because she's so confident in him, like, just falling for her. Mm Mm-hmm. So... Because she already sees it. She sees it. She She knows it's going... Oh, yeah. She knows it's going down. Yep. And he is so afraid that he won't say anything. Mm. All he keeps talking about is how scared he is. How scared. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Um, And she was kind of dragging out these, like, deep you know, well thought out answers for him. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah, but like you kept me around. And he was like, well, sometimes it just works out. (laughs) He's already fallen for her. Oh yeah. Like there's no, like I'm going to fall. Like you've already fallen for this chick. (laughs) It's like the same way. And we'll get to this later. The same way that Tia has fallen for him. Oh God. The same way. It's the Mm -hmm. same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is very much. They're infatuated with this, Mm -hmm. with each other. Um, but then what makes me annoyed with the whole Becca thing with Ari is that he keeps saying, like, I want a wife, though. Yeah. So he keep he has this notion in his head already that a 22-year-old does not equal long-term mm-hmm. marriage and wife. Mm-hmm. So then why keep her around? Yeah. Should have got, got her out. Yeah. Why? But the fact that he keeps her around, mm-hmm. for me, lets me know that he's not serious. Yeah, that's true. He's not serious. That's true. He's still he's still open to having another couple years or mm-hmm. two with some play things. Yeah. Because if you really were about this marriage life, about to get down on one knee at the end of this episode, it would not be with a 22-year-old. No. And you keep saying it yourself. Yeah. I want a wife and I don't know about her. <laughs> Why is she here then? Set her ass home. Let her go live her life with being young and 22 and so right. rope the bitch your <laughs> Ugh. Uh, after Becca M, we had Becca K, mm-hmm. who, she was the first date, first one-on-one date, yep. which was like ages ago. So he wanted to, I guess, make it up to her, just give her, make her feel special. Mm-hmm. So he brought her to, was it his room or like a room? His room. And this was my Ari can get it moment. <laughs> Sounds so enthusiastic. Getting the cookies? <laughs> no! how he remembered her from the first date right where he got to know a lot about her not really exposing that much of him Mm -hmm. and wanted to make it up to her Mm -hmm. and brought her to his room which I thought was like a kind of a lot Mm -hmm. I was expecting like a little weirdness to go down right sometimes does that happen I know no, this I don't have any expectations. I've never watched the middle of this show. Yeah, so I don't know what what goes down. No, nah, not with this wack. Oh, okay. <laughs> if it was Nick Vial, Nick Vial's oh, down yeah. there. He's got to throw down <laughs> anytime. <laughs> He's like, it's not fantasy sweets, but you trying to hit the fantasy. Suites? Let's go. But with Ari, no, nah, he ain't doing that shit. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, still in this moment, I just thought him appreciating Becca was really nice and really sweet. Cute. Yeah. One thing that annoyed me with Becca, though, during this moment, so she said something like, "It's you know, it's so hard getting to know you with just, like, you know, 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there, mm-hmm. um, and she's like, there's just so much I want to ask you, and then <laughs> started making out. I was like, ask away, bitch. Yeah. What questions you got? Yeah. Go ahead. But they just made out pretty made out. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is one thing that just keeps annoying me with the girls, just because... They're, they're, they've all been saying little variations of, I don't know you. I don't know enough about yeah. you. There's so much I want to know. When you're having your one-on-one time, like, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> I don't get it. Like, does no one know how to have a conversation? 
Well, I think Ari doesn't know how to have a conversation, which is tough for a bunch of girls who are really pretty and used to guys mm-hmm. kind of chasing them. I guess. So I think it's hard for them to adjust mm-hmm. and kind of like, you know, reprogram almost yeah. the way that you date. Yeah. Because now you have to really pull it out of somebody. And they're probably not used to doing that. But why do you have to pull, like, the, for me, the first date mm-hmm. is always, like, so easy. Yeah. Because you don't know each other. There's so much to talk mm-hmm. about. Date one and two is always, like, the easiest, I feel like. Yeah. there's so much to talk about. I have yeah. a million questions to ask. I don't you know, know what? You. There's a lot to talk about if you don't know the history behind some guys. But if you know that somebody hasn't been in love in five years Mm -hmm. on purpose and you're going on a first date with them, do you really want to get too deep? No. But do you have serious reservations about that one fact that you know? Yes. So ask about it. Yeah, but that's so scary to ask on the first date. Yeah, but this is a different world. You (laughs) might not be here tomorrow. That's true. Get all your questions out. Yeah. I'm just like so perplexed why they're so like... I keep hearing too many times, like, I don't know enough. I want to ask you. I have so much to ask you. But then they just make out the whole time. <laughs> like, oh, what's your favorite color? Yeah. <laughs> ask him foolishness. And I'm like, come on. Ask about his family. What was college life? Where's the yeah. favorite place you've been traveling? Mm-hmm. What's on your bucket list? Let's talk about faith. Like, I'm glad. Well, that comes up on yeah. TV. Talking about faith. Like, yeah. let's talk about real shit. How mm-hmm. are you falling for someone when you don't know his hopes and dreams? Mm-mm. Hello? <laughs> I don't even know his favorite color. I want to know where he sees himself in 10 years. <laughs> How does he want to raise kids? Damn at 46. Yes. Holy shit. What's your 10 year plan, Ari? Yeah. Fuck. So that just got on my nerves. But anyways, <laughs> back to Crystal. No. <laughs> so she's still in her, her robe doing confessionals, <laughs> talking foolishness. Um, but she then decides to get dressed up. Mm-hmm. And come on down to the after party. Where she was not invited. Where you were not invited and you were for damn sure not welcome. Yeah. Because the girls were just chatting you up. Yeah. The entire time. Yeah. So she comes on down. The girls are obviously pissed. And she's like, you know, can I, you know, can I take a second and say something? And she goes with her same narrative that we just continue to hear. Mm-hmm. I felt disrespected. My Mm -hmm. feelings were hurt by Ari. Blah, 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 (laughs) blah. Like, I'm tired of it. And so Kendall questioned her, and she was like, so when you spoke with Ari a while ago, like, did you mention everything you said? Right. Where she was basically alluding to all the shit she was saying in the bus ride. Mm -hmm. About going home, have her bags packed, like, he ain't shit, blah, blah, (laughs) blah. Did you say all of that? Yeah. No, she did not. Nope. Of course not. Um, Becca, who in this moment got my invite to the cookout. Oh my god, she is mine in a different moment. I had it for a different moment, but then as I'm reading this, I'm like, nah, I want to give it to her in this moment. Okay. Becca got my invite to the cookout because she came with all the questions yeah. and all the shade mm-hmm. and just made Crystal look, feel, seem very dumb. Mm-hmm. Becca was like, you said you weren't coming here tonight, and yet... Here you are. Oh, yeah. Are you a liar? <laughs> Did you just go back on your word? Yeah. Did you change your mind? Um, Ari changed his mind. Is that make him any different from mm-hmm. what you're doing right now? And Crystal just sitting there like, uh, 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 you ch- people change their mind. Right. Because they're grown. Because they're grown and they can do that and there's no rules to any of this shit. <sighs> so anyways, they're just chewing Crystal's ass all the way up. Um, Lauren B is chatting with Ari. Mm-hmm. She gets my Becky of the week again. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Because she had the nerve to say she had 21 questions. <sighs> And didn't come prepped with the questions. None. Just not a question. (laughs) She's my Becky of the Week because of that. Just unprepared. Yeah. As I said, you get a finite moment with this guy. You have 21 questions. She was like, I have 21. Let's play 21 questions. (laughs) I don't know if I even have 21 questions. Me as a viewer, I'm like, I got 85,000 questions for this nigga. I don't know shit about this guy. What do you mean you have 21? 
21 questions. Oh my god. Lauren B, generic white girl number four. She yeah. gets Becky in a week again for that whack shit. <laughs> So her first question was favorite color, which is so ridiculous. He's worn blue the whole season. That was his answer? Yeah. I mean, those yeah, he was like blue, of course. Um, then I guess he asked her, how do you like your coffee? I know, and she was like, coconut milk, which is the most exotic thing about Lauren B. Yes. (laughs) She likes coconut milk. She likes coconut milk. Whoa, talk about unique. (laughs) (laughs) Then he asks, you know, now they're trying to get deep. What's your biggest fear? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know in life or about this process. And she says, you know, that you'll choose someone else, you know, and I'll have fallen for you. No shit. This is everyone's fear. Right. It's the ultimate fear of being on the show. Right. That you don't get chosen, but you've fallen for him. Oh my god. Generic, generic, generic. And the date Rose ended up going to Lauren B. Which is, I don't know why. I don't get why. He feels something with her that I we're guess. just not Yeah, seeing. we don't see it. Yeah. I don't click with her at all. Mm-mm. I find her extremely uninteresting. Uninteresting, and then I don't understand why she's so far along in her head in with him. her head. I don't get it. They haven't had a one-on-one. Mm-mm. They don't seem to talk about much Mm-mm. during their, the one little moments they get together. Yeah. I don't understand, I don't understand the Lauren B concept yeah yeah <laughs> at all so yeah she got the date rose um moving along time for tia's one-on-one date mm-hmm. she meets ari down by the everglades yep where he is just looking oh my god you guys pale as shit you guys you could see the lake through his <laughs> skin it was translucent <laughs> My God! Why is he so pale? I don't know what kind of SPF are you using, my nigga. It's what do you have? SPF fifty? <laughs> what you got on? Right. Oh my God! Yeah, but I don't even understand because they're in they're in South Florida, Florida yeah. in the Everglades. That Florida heat, that yeah. Florida sun is no joke. Mm-hmm. Why is he not having? Like, why does he have tanning oil on? Why does he not? I don't want to get because he looked tanner in Lake Tahoe. Right. He had a good tan there. Yeah. So I was confused. As, what is going on with Ari's skin? Yeah. We still don't know. Right. That would be a great question, Lauren B. Lauren and B. your 21 <laughs> questions. What's the deal with the skin, my man? <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. It's crazy. Every time I see you, you look a little bit different. You're a different color. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so Ari greets Tia, and they go off on their... One of those like weird Everglades. Oh yeah, the little boats. Yeah, yeah. they call them. And they're looking at alligators <clears throat> and turtles and all kinds of stuff in the Everglades. Then they roll up to, um, I guess their next destination, mm-hmm. which was, I don't know this man's name. I'm Gerald. calling him. I'm calling him Billy Bob. Okay. Fuck Gerald. That's a better name. Yes. They roll up to Billy Bob's home. Mm-hmm. Billy Bob looks. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Billy Bob looks scary. He does. He looks scary. No, he looks like it. My personal American Horror Story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like. Yeah, that's ex- Oh my god. A personal American Horror Story. Right. Yes. Like personally, if I ran into Billy anywhere, oh, no. I'm looking the other. I'm not looking him in his eyes. Nope. No way. No. no. Billy Bob 100% canvassed for Donald Trump. Oh, absolutely. He's knocking on doors, trying oh, to get yeah. out the boat for Donald. Yes, <laughs> on his Everglades boat, because he doesn't have a car. <laughs> on his Everglades boat, <laughs> riding through with a Trump sign on the back. Yep. And make America MAGA hat. Oh, good. And, like, loving for Donald loving Trump. Loving for Ooh. Donald. Ooh. Billy Bob looks <sighs> terrifying. Oh, Ooh, boy. Yikes. Um... This could have never been a CN date. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no. this was totally tailored for Tia. Tia, specifically. Like, every element of this date was for Tia. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Billy Bob welcomes them into the home with his raw-ass-looking skin. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I had to mention the skin. (laughs) He's been out in that Florida sun. He doesn't have a car! 
He ain't got no car. <laughs> he has never heard of no SPF. No. <laughs> that skin is raw. He does. Yuck. He looks like a handbag. <laughs> Just yuck. <laughs> a nice coach bag. He does. It looks straight, like a purse. Straight leather. Ooh. So he brings them in. He's feeding them like froglet, like frog, like fried frog, yeah. or whatever, deep fried corn, all kind of southern yeah, just like crazy. craziness, which looked delicious. I ain't even gonna lie. It is. It was all beige, all beige. <laughs> Everything was fried. The corn was fried. Yeah, the, the vegetables was fried. The vegetables were fried. Looked delicious. So T and Ari just you know hanging on a little sw- swing wagon thing. Oh yeah, a little swing bench. Thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, whatever that is. And they're talking about frogging and all kind of country stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tia in her confessional is just like you know she's really falling for Ari. Yeah, she's really fun. And you know Natasha pointed this out is that they're really grooming her to be the bachelorette. Yes. And this is a perfect example of that because they're showing her falling in love perfectly. Yes. And they are setting it up mm-hmm. so that she falls in love. Because in her head, she's thinking like, oh my God, he took me to the Everglades. He took me to the Everglades. That's what she's thinking. Mm-hmm. In reality, the producers was like, <laughs> setting all of this up. Let's get this ready mm-hmm. for a little wiener mm-hmm. next season. Season oh whatever. Yeah. 32. <laughs> And, um, yeah, I don't know. I felt kind of bad for her in this moment because she's, like, she's really falling for him. She's young. She's 26. Oh, she's 26. Yeah. And, um, it's really just a setup. Yeah, they really... I mean, she doesn't find it with Ari, whatever, but they're, yeah, they're definitely grooming her for Bachelor, Bachelorette, for sure. Mm-hmm. Every one-on-one or date thing that she's gotten with him has all been tailored to her. Yep. Because when they had the hay, the bales of hay. Right, on the right. Of hay, drinking exactly. Exactly. They're trying to make sure that the viewers are agreeing and yes. make sure that they are liking what they see yes. with her. They're never, yeah, they're never throwing Tia out of her element. Nope. Even the Derby, Demi yes. Derby. Yes, she did. That shit was made for her. She did that on the weekend. Yeah. She's oh, always put in a situation to make her shine, look mm-hmm. well, and the way they edited this whole date was like, Tia might be the next Bachelorette. Yep. So, time for the night portion of their date, Mm -hmm. where they are, I'm not sure what this was, it was like an old cabin with some like boat figurines around. Yeah, I don't really know what this was. I don't know, some shit. Um, Tia's dress was horrible. Oh my god, you guys! Tia! (laughs) That dress was not cute. Yeah, it was bad. She definitely got that at a boutique in Wiener. Yeah, yep. From Raven's Boutique. Oh my god! (laughs) Raven's Boutique and Wiener. Raven's Boutique and Wiener. Oh. That's what that dress looked like. Yeah. Um, and she gives a little bit more context, you know, into who she is. Mm-hmm. So she's from Wiener, which is a small town population, whatever. And she left Wiener for Little Rock for college. Mm-hmm. Um, she was in college for seven years. Which we were like, we both what? were like, the fuck? <laughs> And then she followed up that she got her doctorate. Right, she's a physical therapist. She's a physical therapist. That's what I wanted. To. That's why. Yeah. yeah. But we both were like, oh, there it is. Yeah, red flag, bitch. What you doing in college for seven years? What's going on there? <laughs> but she's Dr. Tia. Mm-hmm. That's pretty dope. I yeah. didn't realize she was a doctor. That's really cool. Good for her. Seven years of school is a lot. Um, and finally, finally, this is why I appreciate Tia. Mm hmm. Finally, we're getting to some meat and some, yes. uh, some seriousness with Ari. Yep. And the one topic that clearly is very important to Tia mm-hmm. is faith. Yep. So she had to ask him. I don't know how she said it exactly, but do you feel like there's a higher power, mm-hmm. basically, is what she was saying. Which is a very gentle way to ask that question, by the way. gentle <laughs> to say, do you, is Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior? <laughs> That's what she could have said and what Tia wanted to say. Oh, gosh. But she's like, well, let me tread lightly. Yeah. Do you believe in a higher power? And his short answer was no. This nah. This nigga's nope. <laughs> He said, like, I don't, he said, I don't think there's a higher power leading me. Yeah. 
And then he gave the backstory about... So, because he, he says he controls his own destiny because he's a race car driver and he's lost so many friends. Yeah. And Natasha and I were talking about this because race car driving is not a regular sport in that way where your friends get... Injured. You know, their finger broken or their ACL gets torn or, you know, they get a concussion. No, these niggas die on sight. <laughs> Should not be laughing. This is not a laughing matter. The way you said that. <laughs> That's true. They are go- like literally in horrible deaths. They yeah. like fires and they blow up and all kinds of crazy things. <laughs> and so that is definitely it would definitely be hard to keep faith in mind yeah. when you see your friends die all yeah. the time. That's tough. Yeah, I'll give him that. Yeah. There's definitely, yeah, people, there is that segment of people who, like, don't really believe in God or don't mm-hmm. have faith, and a lot of them have faced some type of trauma. Yeah. So they have questions, rightfully so, of, yeah. like, what the fuck, dude, up there? Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I get it. Um, and so Ari asks her, you know, can you be with someone who doesn't share the same faith? Mm-hmm. And this is where I had to roll my eyes at you. Oh, I know. Because you know she was not being true to herself. No. She was like, yeah, like, you know, I can understand your beliefs and, like, as long as we, like, respect each other's faiths or whatever the hell she said. And that is how you know Tia is too young Young. for this man. Yep. Because she is putting herself in Ari's puzzle piece. Mm -hmm. He has a puzzle, he's missing the piece, and all she wants to do is wedge right in. Mm -hmm. So she's just doing whatever she wants, Mm -hmm. or whatever she can, I'm sorry. He's compromising. Yep, compromising something that is clearly very important to her. If you're raised in the church, that's clearly very important to you. Yep. Um, So yeah, girl, you don't want a Christmas tree? You don't want to celebrate Easter? Right. Or not even just to celebrate, because that's like the little things, like the the holidays, like... And just the everyday stuff. Like, you don't yeah. want somebody to pray with. Someone to pray with you, yeah. go to church with you, raise your kids up in the yeah. same kind of belief system. Mm-hmm. Like, Tia, stop lying. You know this is important to you. Right. You know your mama is the deaconess. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> she looked like somebody's mama yeah. who's really up in the church. Yeah, choir, she does. Like, all of that. Yeah. You can't bring home this atheist man. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like he is, as a 36-year-old man, is in a position where he won't appreciate anything that she will try to teach him Mm -hmm. about something so big as faith. Yeah. And there aren't... uh, It it depends on the man, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but a lot of men who are so definitive about those big, giant things like religion Mm -hmm. are just not open to a younger woman teaching them. Yeah. And so I just think, Tia, run away now. Yeah, she would have an uphill battle. Yeah. Like, trying to get him open yep. to... Because he didn't seem open to faith like no. at all. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Which is, I mean, fair enough to you. That's Right, that's his decision. Are. Yeah. Um, but, but Tia, don't front like it ain't important. Right. So that was a little bit sad to watch. Yeah. Um, but then Tia, you know, she went into this date with an objective. Mm-hmm. And her objective was to let him know that she was falling for him. Mm-hmm. And she did just that. She said, you make me feel good. I'm falling for you. I'm falling in love with you. Mm-hmm. While she was saying this, she wasn't really looking him in the eye. Yeah, she so was like, he, I'm looking down and scared. Right, called her out and said, well, you have to look me in the eye when you say this. <laughs> so she repeated it. All of this was just crazy to me. <laughs> <laughs> just talk about this for a second. This yeah, whole let's do thing it. is nuts. Let's do it. Tia just got her one-on-one date. Uh-huh. She's only spent, as we said, fleeting moments here, there, and everywhere for the last four weeks or whatever. How are you now coming on this date prepared to say you're falling for him? Right. The falling should probably come after this date. Right! You know what I mean? Yeah, because she was already ready. She was. She came into the date ready to tell him I'm in love. Like, can't you have the one-on-one, grow those feelings, and then tell mm-hmm. him how you're falling? Like, the whole thing seemed backwards. Yeah. My theory... Oh, Let's not forget who Tia's friend is. Oh, shit, you're right. Let's not forget. That's right. Tia's best friend is Raven. Second place. Second place mm-hmm. on this show and on the Bachelor and on Bachelor in Paradise. Yep. Tia got all the ends of the mechanics of this show. Mm-hmm. And as we know, there's always a milestone where you have to tell the guy at some point the words, I am falling for you. Yeah. Or I'm falling in love with you. Mm-hmm. And you kind of want to be, you don't want to do it too late. You're right. You kind of almost want to beat some of the other girls yeah. at doing it. So he sees, like, 
how much you feel for him or whatever, mm-hmm. and that gives him like warm. It gives him validation or some shit. Yeah. I don't really know. Um, but Tia, this is too soon. <laughs> this is crazy, Tia. Like Raven and tell you this. You you were <laughs> Raven and say this soon, girl. Oh, she went rogue. <laughs> she went rogue. Oh, no. This is a little bit much for me, Tia. Yeah, just a little bit. Like I I don't get it. How are you in love? You don't know him. <laughs> So, of course, she gets the date, Rose. Good for her. <laughs> yada, yada. Um, so now back at the house, time for the rose ceremony. Yep. And the girls go to this very beautiful venue. Mm-hmm. The Bonnet House. The Bonnet House. Mm-hmm. As I sit here in my bonnet, <laughs> <laughs> recording this podcast, my hair is wrapped up. Uh, they go to the Bonnet House, which is, I don't know what this is, but it was a very nice, beautiful venue. Yeah, like country club. Country, country club thing. kind of thing, yeah. Um, and uh, Crystal, you know, I'm just, I'm invested in this life with Ari, <laughs> you know, and, you know, he brought me, you know, to his house, you know, I'm just so invested in this life. Can I just say, he brought her to his house, which could have been anywhere. His parents, which are there, so mm-hmm. that's one element that cannot be replaced. Mm-hmm. And like a strip mall. What about <laughs> those places are you invested in? She, he should have never brought this girl to He really shouldn't have. He set himself all the way up. Because yeah. now he has a crazy clinger on his hand. Yeah. And it was way too soon to bring a girl like this home Mm because she is just in love now. Mm -hmm. Because true, I mean, she on that date. I don't know how much she really learned about him. She saw some videos and whatever, whatever. But she met the family. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Yeah. Once you meet the mom and the dad, and if it's with a guy that you like, you automatically feel like connected. Yes. Feel like oh my god. And you feel validated. Yes. 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 And you start like, picturing shit in your head, uh-huh, uh-huh. fantasizing about Christmases, or yep. whatever the fuck. Yep. So that that's where they, you know, messed up. Because mm-hmm. she met the family, and she is all wrapped up and invested now. now. Um, so that's Crystal. Kendall got another little one-on-one time with him. Um, still looking cute. She had a cute little floral. Yeah. Off the shoulder, yeah, little number. Two-piece number. She had her question book with her this is a great idea very good idea yep i like this yeah this reminds me of on sean's season mm-hmm. with Catherine, who became his wife mm-hmm. who's she, the winner who is the winner <laughs> they got she's pregnant right now yep. the kid. Uh-huh. Oh, shit Catherine did little cute things like this mm. i think her thing was she would always slip him like a little note Oh, a little cute, cute note or something. And then they would like talk about it when they saw each other or something. Oh, cute! So you have to do cute things like this. Yeah. You have to come with, you gotta be creative. Yeah. Th- make, a little, make little traditions, mm-hmm. things for him to look forward to. So when she brought up the, the question book, I immediately thought of Catherine. Yeah. That worked for Catherine, clearly. So she had a little question book, and I mean, one of her the crazy question that he chose was a what was it? If you're, it was if you're in a tribe and the tradition is to eat someone who died. Would you try that? Yeah. And he was like, "No, nah. fuck out of here, <laughs> no, no." And she was like, "What, really? I'm trying it. Why not?" I feel like she has. Uh, Crystal. I mean, Kendall is definitely in some human flesh. <laughs> it's a taxidermist or whatever. <laughs> Dealing with like animal oh carcasses, you know she took a little bite of yeah something. Oh, <laughs> good. Um, yes. So Kendall's getting her one on one. Meanwhile, the girls are all just chatting shit about Crystal, uh-huh. <laughs> just kicking about Crystal. Crystal's outside, the hearing everything. I'm mm-hmm. assuming. So she comes in and asks, like, does anyone want to? You know, talk one on one. One on one. Mm-hmm. Instead of me sitting here, you guys getting up on me or attacking me. So mm-hmm. let's like do this one on one thing. And Kendall takes her up on it. Um, so they go off and talk, right? And shout out to Diggy on Twitter. He was like, Diggy. Crystal is now getting the one on ones. Like, whose show is this? Uh- <laughs> <laughs> like, what is happening here? She's been turned around the whole show. <laughs> 
my god. Crystal's doing one on ones with the girls. This is nuts. They're spending more time oh with one on ones with her with than her. With Ari. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Crystal and Kendall have a little moment outside. Mm-hmm. Crystal's like, You're criticizing me, and I feel like you're attacking me for how I feel. And Kendall's like, no, actually, I'm. It was just, this whole thing was just. They're just spinning around yeah. in circles. I'm reacting because of the way you reacted, and mm-hmm. the reaction of your reaction <laughs> was why I'm reacting in this way, and blah oh blah blah God. blah blah. Tia comes outside and was like, bitch, we just want you to take ownership. Right. Like, that's all this is about. Own up to the shit that you said in the bus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Own up to the crazy, and we'd all be like, okay, mm-hmm. that's it. It's all mm-hmm. about ownership and being grown. Becca has her moment. Um, this was my invite to the cookout. This was mine. Yes! <laughs> Becca came through with the strong cream shimmery highlighter, <laughs> reading Crystal down to filth! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> reading her and just sat down, sat down and then sighed, which is how you know you just have too much on your mind. You just need to come out with it. Mm-hmm. And she just came out and said, Why are you here? Mm-hmm. Why are, are you still here? What are you doing here? Yeah. Because clearly you're not here for Ari because I don't think you like him. No. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And weren't your bags packed? You're right. You unpacked already? Like, it's not too late. Grab that shit and be out. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then when she didn't answer the question, she just left. Who, Becca? Yeah. Because she's like, I'm not going to get any straight answers yeah. from this girl. She was like, there's no point in doing this, no. so I got to go. Yikes. Meanwhile, um, Jacqueline. Yes! Finally, the producers, editors are showing us somebody mm-hmm. that we never see. Jacqueline's having her one-on-one with Ari. Um, and she's... It's just hard to, like, comment on some of these girls that we never see. Because, yeah. like, I don't... She clearly has feelings for Ari, but, like, we didn't see any development of this. Right. <laughs> and we want to give her the benefit of the yeah. doubt. Because none of these girls are, like, absent-minded and stupid. Like, no. Yeah. And not Jack. Jacqueline's a very... She's yeah, the she's research, accomplished. Yeah, the research assistant scientist we always talk yep. about. Um, so yeah, it's just hard. So she's flooding him with compliments and mm-hmm. yada yada yada. Um, Ari tells her she's unlike anyone that he's ever dated. <sighs> he she's says like, that to everyone. Oh, he literally says that to everybody. <laughs> but it's just annoying. The, the editors are just doing some of the girls a disservice. Yeah. At least for us, for the viewers. Because yeah. we're not seeing the development of Jacqueline and... Ari's relationship. This is reminding me of Adam and Chris. I was just about to say Adam and um Matt. Adam and Matt. Adam and Matt. But it, it was only two of them. It was only Adam and Matt right. that we really didn't know. Yeah. This is like a whole slew a of women. Whole oh, slew of girls. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, uh, have you met Ari or no? <laughs> <laughs> you know where we're here for? Uh, so yeah, saw a little bit of Jacqueline. Don't really understand what's going on there, but something fun. is. Something is. Um, and then Crystal oh. gets her one-on-one time with Ari mm-hmm. since their whole confrontation. Um, and she says, or Ari says, like, you're so much, you were so much further along than all right. the other girls. Which, uh, as he said, that just made me more pissed about her getting that date with the family. Yeah. Because she clearly got such an unfair advantage. Mm-hmm. Like, she, as he said, was, like, leagues away from the other girls. Mm -hmm. Really stemming from that date. Um, So, yeah. Crystal, you are way further along. Um, And then she gives this... You know what? (laughs) She gives her explanation where she kind of connects it to her childhood. So, she pulled an Annalise. She pulled an Annalise. Mm -hmm. I I wanted to choose my words wisely. Yeah. Because I don't want to invalidate somebody's experience. With her, you know, the childhood stuff that she was bringing up. Yeah. Be yeah, it, you're right. She pulled it. She pulled it. <laughs> she said basically him changing her mind, him changing his mind on her and all of that triggered her from her childhood. You know, she lived in a bowling alley with her mom. Um, her mother was, I guess, not very stable and that she mm-hmm. wouldn't really follow through on things that she said. Um, so and the men who she dated promised her, her mom a lot of things and yes. never followed through. Right. At the bowling alley. At this bowling alley. And so, um, for her, words just hold a lot of merit. Mm-hmm. And so when he went back on her word, and when he went back on his word, it, like, triggered her or whatever. <laughs> um, and so Ari, rightfully so, was like, look. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look here, Crystal. If you think this is hard, <laughs> like, it's only going to get worse. Yep. It's only going to get harder. Mm-hmm. And if we end up being together after the show, that's going to be hard, too. Because right. outside of the show, it's different. Like, we're going to be building a life together, being scrutinized by the tabloids and whatever. Like, you can't put up with me changing my mind over some <laughs> bowling foolishness. How the fuck are we going to be together in real life? And even after, right after you pick them, don't you not see them for, like, uh, yes. at least two months? They're, like, they're, like, sequestered from yeah. each other for a while because they can't spoil the show or whatever. Right. So, girl... Oh my god. Talk about insecure. Yeah, crazy. My goodness. Um, and then <laughs> another funny moment. So she was like, oh my god, it's a, I don't know what led up to this, but she's like, oh my god, it's our first fight. And he was like, it could be our last fight. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's a matter of fact, too. He did. Yeah, he did. Ari's tired of crystal shit, mm. just like we are. But he feels like he can't really let her go because they do have a connection or whatever the yeah. fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's trying to ride it out. So time for the rose ceremony. Going into the rose ceremony, we already knew who the fuck was going home. Mm-hmm. Because Ashley, black girl Ashley. I know. She got more camera time on this episode than <laughs> she's ever gotten, which is a clue that she's going home. Yeah. So that was a thing. Um... So yeah, the the rose ceremony is there. We have Chelsea and Tia, and Lauren B already have roses. Yes, yeah, confirmed. Confirmed roses. Chelsea, I just have to say, looked amazing. She had on some chartreuse, you guys. The yellow dress. Yes. Okay. Yes. That that shade is called chartreuse, and it's uh, one of my favorite shades. It's not of as yellow. <laughs> no, it's chartreuse. chartreuse. I look like a bright ass yellow to me. <laughs> Oh my god, it was everything. Everything. That dress was so amazing. Pretty. It was so bright and yellow. Mm-hmm. It looked bomb. Yep. Like Chelsea snaps to you. That was a bomb dress. Um, Crystal in her confessional. This is how you know she ain't on her meds. Right! This is for the moment that I was like, someone give her the little Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, them little, that little pill, bro. Okay, bro. <laughs> what she say? She said, I showed Ari all the sides of me. And she kept saying, like, normal things. Like, playful. Happy. Happy. Sad. sad, Emotional. Futuristic. Um. (laughs) How is that an emotion? A side of you? You know what? What? Another shout out. Shout out to Crystal from The Read. Words mean things. Yeah. You can't just be shouting out random words. (laughs) Foolishness. Because you sound crazy. So nuts. I showed him my futuristic side. What are you saying? Are you saying that you're foreshadowing a future of crazy? <laughs> like, is that what right. the futuristic side was? I think we're trying to make too much sense of it. It made no sense. Mm-hmm. Bitch was just saying words. Nope. And it made none. No sense. Um, so yeah, the roses go out. Becca M gets the first rose. Okay. Followed by CN. Mm-hmm. Followed by lots of other roses. <laughs> Jenna had me cracking up as well. She's yes. like, I'm very nervous. <laughs> nervous is one of my it's one of my top feelings. <laughs> Jenna's hilarious. I love Jenna. I don't know what Jenna is on, but I need some. Yeah. I need some of that good stuff. <laughs> um, and then time for the last rose, and it goes to Crystal. And he said it exactly like how you just said it just now. Crystal. <laughs> He was so ashamed yeah. to say her name. Yep. And just mumbled it, basically. Mm-hmm. Crystal. Basically, oh, didn't even open his mouth. Nope. Are you ain't shit. Yeah, you seriously. Exactly that was a bad move. Mm-hmm. So, we gotta say goodbye to some girls. Oh, we gotta say goodbye to Ashley. Ashley. Black girl going home. She, in my opinion, was too young for this show. Yeah, that's Anyways, definitely true. She was yeah. 23, 24. One of the young ones. Yeah. Time for her to go. Um, but yeah, we didn't really get to see her at all. Um, Marik. Marik. My glam sister. My glam sister. Didn't see anything from her. But Restaurant she, tour. I know. Oh my God. But you know what? She has been doing some makeup tutorials on Instagram Live. Oh, so I've been okay. watching her. We've been getting ready together. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> and Marie. Get ready with Marie in the morning. Yeah. Like one of those oh, things. Yeah. 
Rick's gone and Mikkel. Mikkel. I wanted to see more of Mikkel. That was a shocker. Yeah. She had got no after her crazy entrance with the hair yes. and the bundles flowing and <laughs> she came in in the car. She got like no time with him. And she was so pretty. She was very pretty. I, I didn't but she was also 23. She was also know. a child. She got to go. <laughs> Bye. Um, and yeah so that was the episode. That was it. It was too much crystal. Yeah, way too much For crystal. For me, just way too much crystal. Yeah. And not enough of all the other girls. I'm like Jacqueline, Marie, yeah. like, we didn't see so many girls. It was just too much crystal for me. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a preview of next week. Ooh, and next week looks good. Next week looks good. So next week they're off to Paris. Which is a lot. Harry. There's seven of them left? Is it? Seven, eight? It's more than that. I think there was 12 oh, no. girls. Three, oh, no. Three went home, right? So, yeah. We're down to like seven, mm-hmm. maybe seven, eight. Something like that. So, they're off to Paris. Yay! Get international. And it seems like there's going to be some drama. So, Becca's age comes back up. Yeah. It seems like it comes back up. Yep. Chelsea is feeling a bit insecure. Right. Because... How am I competing with a 22-year-old? And she's... It's ironic. She's competing with... Almost like competing with her old self. Mm. She's competing mm. with this girl in her early 20s, looking at this man who's older, who can mm. take care of her, mm-hmm. and who's probably going to leave her. Mm-hmm. Because he doesn't actually see a future with mm-hmm. this girl. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know if she can, is going to bring that up. I don't know if she can bring that up. Yeah. That's like too deep for a bachelor nation. Right. But I'm bringing it up right now. <laughs> That's true. That's a good uh, little analogy. There. Right? Like, yeah. she's, like, looking at herself in the mirror from years ago. Right. And she's like, how am I competing with my old self right, right. now? Right! <laughs> what is this? How do you like both of us? What? How do you like both of us? That, yeah, this would drive me crazy, too, yeah. Chelsea. She's 29. She's a kid. She's living in a whole different world. Mm-hmm. And her competition is a 22-year-old <laughs> who is, like, young, free, bubbly, sexy, like, all these things. Yeah. Like, dude, and she's she's still here. Right. Like, what are you looking for, actually? Because I don't know. We're on the third trip? Yeah, what the fuck? So that that's coming with Chelsea. Um, Jacqueline looks like she gets a one-on-one. Yay! Finally, we get to see Jacqueline, mm-hmm. who, as she says on her date, she feels far behind. Because <laughs> y'all are, girl. Oh, it's like date, it's like week, what, six now? She's yeah. She's just getting a one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Jesus. And then more crystal foolishness, it looks like. Yeah, more mess. More mess. Yeah. Um, any predictions? Oh, gosh, predictions? I predict that Chelsea and Becca are going to have some sort of heart-to-heart. Mm. I don't know about what. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Chelsea's going to make the realization that I made about Chelsea. Mm-hmm. But I think they're going to have some sort of heart-to-heart. Because I this is the Moulin Rouge thing, right? I think so. They like perform at Moulin Rouge. And I know that I remember from the previews when they kept talking about her age, Becca goes down these stairs in this costume. Yes, I remember that. And I was like, oh my gosh, she really looks like a baby there. Yeah. Like, holy shit. <laughs> Go on her recital. Yeah, legit. <laughs> yeah. And so I think that there's going to be some revelation with the girls and Becca's age. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I think that's it's due. Yeah. It's coming soon. Uh, yeah. It's definitely coming soon. Um, yeah, I'm going to predict that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Jacqueline mm-hmm. might be a dark horse. Ooh, okay. And I think we're just going to get glimpse of that next week. Okay. So it looks like she gets her one-on-one. Mm-hmm. So I think we're going to get glimpse of pretty much everything we're missing off camera. Yeah. Because clearly her and Ari have some type of connection if she's still here. Right. So I think we're finally going to get a glimpse into like why Ari sees something with her. Mm-hmm. And she might be a dark horse. That's exciting. She might be one to watch. Yeah. I'm just putting that out there. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it for the episode, guys. That's it for the episode. We'll be back next week. Mm-hmm. As always, please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> And rate and review. If you are listening to us every week, if you are a two black girls, one rose, like, follower or whatever. Subscriber. Subscriber. Yes. Rate us. Hit that five-star rating and write us a review. Mm -hmm. Leave us some nice, kind words. We love reading it. We do. Yes. Um, And as always, you can connect with us on Twitter. We live tweet every Monday Mm -hmm. and 
tweet other foolishness throughout the yeah, week. Yeah, other mess, <laughs> other black mess, other black mess. <laughs> um, our handle is the number two B L K girls, the number one Rose, on Twitter. And you can always email us, and we will obviously shout you like shout you out like mm-hmm. we did with our girl Brianna. Yep. Um, and you can email us at the number two black girls, the number one Rose at gmail.com. Yay! Yay! All right, guys. See you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.